uh, you know, coming out of in the in the near future. All right, we have another brief yeah, news point coming in. Me. Surendra have, Singh, Lali, stay seconds. on with us. Uh, Stay on with us. We have another breaking news coming in. Prime Minister Narayan Modi held bilateral meeting with Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida on the sidelines of the Quad Summit in Wilmington, Delaware. The two leaders reflected on their numerous interactions, particularly since their inaugural annual summit in March 22. Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed his gratitude to the Prime Minister Kishida for his steadfast commitment and leadership in advancing the India-Japan special strategic and global partnership over the years. The discussions encompasses various aspects of the partnership focusing on strengthening defence and security ties as well as enhancing business-to-business -business and people-to-people -people collab collaborations. Prime Minister Modi took the opportunity to bid farewell to Prime Minister Kishida, wishing him success and fulfillment in his future endeavours. So, uh, Surinder Singh Lali, now uh, uh, Prime Minister Narin Modi has also held bilateral uh, talks with uh, Prime Minister of Japan. So, what do you, do you expect from the bilateral ties that have taken place between India and Japan and what it means for uh, India? You see, India and Japan has, uh, if you realize when India opened up, uh, in fact, even before India opened up, uh, the first collaboration we had in the socialistic India was with Suzuki. And so much so that, you know, most of the revenues of Suzuki now come out of India. So India and Japan have been, you know, natural allies and a lot of what uh, you know, technology transfer happened uh, with between the two of us. And if you look at it overall, we're all so victims of the Chinese aggressive, <laughs> you know, predatory foreign policy. So I think even in India and Japan, there is a lot of technology, there is a lot of, uh, you know, uh, 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 wealth generation that could happen between the two countries. But if you allow me, can I just uh, add one more point that you know, recently a leader of opposition went and made some unfortunate noises talking about, you know, a, a certain religion, and especially why certain religion. I'm from Sikh religion, you know, I wear a turban and a, and a kada, and I think somebody would just pick up the phone and let them know that the, the current air chief, which was yesterday, happens to be from a religion where he wears a turban and a kada. So it's not that easy. The, the Americans don't allow things to happen that easily. They also do extract their pound of flesh. So while a lot of, you know, goody goodies are happening and a lot of bilateral happening, uh, you know, the Americans are, the Indians, us on the back foot because just like three days ago, you know, a district court in the United States issued, you know, summons to the Indian government, to NSA, to the extra chief. So obviously, uh, uh, while America is in a habit of having, uh, you know, as allies, but the nimble and the deaf foreign minister that we have, and we have explained it to them many times through various actions and through the Ukraine war, that we want to be a strategic partner and not an ally. And that's where you realize that how well the Indian foreign ministry, the Modi government, dealt with the, it is dealing with the Russian war. We, we did buy our LS-400s, we did buy our oil, and yet we are, uh, you know, in, in, in meetings and uh, in, in agreements with the United States. So India uh, has been very instrumental in maintaining a global balance where we want to inherit the problems of the West and their post-Cold War. We don't want to, you know, simply antagonize people because they didn't get along with the G7s. We have our own independent foreign policy, and for us, it's not Camp A or Camp B. For us, it's our energy requirements, our emerging middle class, and the people of Republic of India more important than, you know, falling into anybody's group or any coterie. All right. Uh, uh, Surinder Singh Lali, as you can see, uh, Japan's Prime Minister Kishida also stated that the security environment surrounding uh, them is in becoming increasingly severe. So uh, the, now Prime Minister, uh, Prime Minister has also held ties with the Australian Prime Minister Albanese. So uh, what 
is uh, India's situation currently? As you have said that uh, India is taking up leadership when it comes to maintaining uh, security, uh, security at uh, Indo-Pacific level. What can, uh, what can we expect from the uh, ties with Australia as well? You see, if I was to brief it up, uh, India is the darling of the world because, uh, you know, we, we, even if you look at our last 1,000 years of history or even beyond, we've not really attacked any nation. So we have our own issues to deal with, especially in South Asia. I mean, one of them is uh, the alleged off-the-record involvement of the deep state of the United States into the Bangladesh and crisis. And, you know, it's a 4,000-kilometer border. So with Pakistan on one side... And unfortunately, if Bangladesh, you know, chooses to go south, that can, you know, we can have our hands full. So similarly, even for, for Japan and, and Taiwan, how, you know, China intimidates them by violating their airspace. So I think the, the, the as they say, the, the elephant in the room, but I'm going to rephrase that by saying the room is China, and especially in the board, we have come for, you know, on a security alliance where we have to uh, you know, respect the territorial sovereignty of every nation. That's my limited point on that. All right. So uh, now India is also uh, this. This was one of the outgoing uh, 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 Joe Biden's last uh, Quad summit that they uh, it was organized in his hometown. So what what are the key issues that the Quad delves into? And now India is set to uh, hold the next Quad summit. Yeah, because I think it was you know quite gracious that uh, at the request of Joe Biden that India agreed to, you know, let our turn go and, and you know, and, and uh, President Biden, uh, you know, wanted to host it in his, in his home state, Delaware, that he's from. So I feel that, uh, uh, you know, the best part is that uh, such, so important is India, especially to the United States, that, uh, you know, it's, America is in the midst of an election and, and the jury is still out who would be. But uh, Donald Trump, you know, the ex-president, went uh, in his off-the-cuff remarks just, you know, three days ago and said, Modi is a great guy and he's coming to see me. And, you know, we haven't made any official announcement. Our ME has not made any official announcement because, uh, you know, if we have to meet, uh, you know, Donald Trump, then obviously a meeting with Kamala Harris also needs to be scheduled. So just to give you an idea that although America is in the middle of an election, but... Uh, be it be the Trump or you know the Republicans or the Democrats, India is going to be a top priority because, as I said, that the the, the all right. Thank the, you for staying or uh, staying with us. Uh, uh, or stay with us. Uh, so